Good afternoon. Glad to have you back. We're in another segment of our Answering the Call series. Uh, we started out with a call to repentance and then a call of the shepherd, then a call to a new identity. And the last time we, we, we talked about the calling of security. And today we're going to continue on with a call of the resurrector. This is one of my favorites. But let's back up a moment and let's get the, the get the uh, uh, foundation for where we're talking about answering the call. Uh, we're not talking about the calling to evangelism or the calling to go overseas and be a missionary or to some specific work. We're talking about the calling of the uh, to respond to the voice of the Lord in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are several callings, and we're getting to those. We'll go over a couple more in the next in the coming weeks uh, that'll be good. We'll wind up with the calling of the bridegroom, which should be really exciting. And uh, But today, we're going to be talking about discerning the voice of God in our life when it looks like things are at a standstill. And, uh, and basically what we want to do is look at what Paul said, uh, for these callings, our calling and election should be made sure. But in 1 Thessalonians 2, in, uh, in verse 12, it says that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing that because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works in you that believe. Paul is saying, we want you to walk worthy of the calling of God into his own kingdom and glory. Um, his glory is what is manifest. Uh, Back a few uh, uh, lessons ago, we defined glory as honor, splendor, power, wealth, dignity, riches, excellence, uh, visible splendor, and majesty. You see, gl the glory of God and the person of, of Jesus Christ links you to royalty. We're called a royal priesthood and a cho chosen generation. But to walk worthy of a calling means that we have discerned something worthy to have value, uh, to be honorable, or having worth or importance. And uh, so if we're walking worthy uh, of something, we have attached value and honor and worth to who it is who is calling us and to what he has done. And so walking with a worthy uh, calling means that we've attached value to Jesus. We've attached, attached value to what he says and to what he's done uh, for us. And tonight, let's go to John 11, and let's look at a story. Uh, most of the time, you hear this story on Easter Sunday, maybe. Uh, you know, uh, that's usually a, a, a good time. That they had, or you may hear this quoted at a graveside. And having been a pastor and minister for close to 45 years, uh, I've done a lot of funerals. And I preach this at a lot of funerals. But it's important that we get it for the believer today to understand the calling of the resurrector as we go forward and as we embrace this life. You know, the Bible says for us to lay hold on eternal life. And so that means that we've got to have our grip strong and to know that we're tightly holding uh, to all that Jesus said that we could have. The Bible says in in uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, the sixth chapter, all things are yours. You know, let's don't sell ourselves shout, uh, short, uh, folks. Let's know that all things are yours. And uh, But going into John 11, let's look at this. We'll read a familiar story. Then we'll then we'll we'll get into the 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 meat of this. Now a certain man in verse one, John eleven was sick, Lazarus of Bethany and the uh, the town of Martha or Mary and, and his sister Martha and it was Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair and whose brother Lazarus was sick. We're going to get back to Mary uh, uh, a little bit later on 
and uh, and it'll actually be into the uh, uh, the next uh, session as well. And therefore, the sisters sent to him because Lazarus was sick, and Lazarus was his friend. That this this group lived together, and probably it was Martha's house. Martha probably was a person of influence and had some money, but but she was the one that owned the house, and Mary and Lazarus lived with him. And Jesus resorted over there and was friends with them. Been there many times, and it says there that the sister sent to him and said, Lord, uh, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and, and Lazarus. And so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Well, you know, he wasn't that far out. It was about a day out, but he stayed two days longer. Now, you know, even though he loved him and everything was gone, it uh, it seemed like that he would have jumped to the occasion and said, let's saddle up the donkeys or whatever we need to do. Let's keep going. But it said that he was ministering uh, in a place and he stayed two more days. And I want to tell you something about the ministry of the Son of God. God always has time to do what all he needs to do wherever he's at. And he doesn't get in a big rush and therefore we don't have to be in a big rush. Although sometimes we think that he runs his uh, works by our wristwatch, and we'll find out from here that he doesn't. And uh, and so, uh, reading on right here, it says that uh, in verse uh, in verse uh, six. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed, and and then he then he went into uh, his disciples that were with him. Let's go to Judea again. And they came back with a thing. It could be dangerous. It could be sketchy for you. You could die there. there there's people there wanting to kill you and everything. But we're going to pick up in uh, in verse um, uh, verse 13. and um, Or let's go, we'll go on over to um, uh, verse 17. So Jesus came. He'd gone through this discourse. Uh, he talked to the disciples. They're on their way. And finally, he arrives at Bethany. And in verse 17, it said, Jesus came and he found that, that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. So uh, it was uh, probably about the time that they'd sent to him that uh, he had already passed. And uh, uh, it, that's, that's a tough thing. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined uh, the women around Martha and Mary to come uh, to comfort them and, and uh, concerning their brother. And then Martha, Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus had come into town, it says, went and met him. And, uh, but Mary was still sitting in the house. Now, I want to tell you something that was, uh, that's really, really something right here. You know, Jesus didn't go to the house. It said that he was out there on the road and when he got close and people had heard and conveyed to Martha and those in the house that he was coming, uh, Martha ran out to meet him. And it says right here in verse 21, uh, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus, and even now, though, I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give it. And Jesus said, uh, Martha, your brother is going to rise again. Now, you know, the, uh, the, uh, this woman is not like, uh, not unlike us. Uh, she could look for Jesus to have done something if he had been there on her time. And so she had faith for his past. Boy, if he could have just showed up earlier, this wouldn't have happened. And Jesus responded back, your brother's going to live. And then uh, let's read on a little further. And then Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me, he will never die. Do you believe this? We're reading from from John 11, 24 uh, through 26. So Martha came and said, Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. There's a past. And then Jesus said, your brother's going to rise again. And then Martha said, I know he'll rise uh, again in the resurrection. So she had faith for the past and she had faith 
for the future, but Martha was living right now in the now of her life. And she didn't need to know a resurrection in the past, and she didn't need to know the resurrection in the in the, uh, the future, which I thank God that we have one. Uh, the Bible says if we uh, have hope of Christ only in this life, we're above all men most miserable. And so we have a, a, a great getting up morning coming for us. Yeah, there's going to be a day that he'll split that eastern sky or we'll hear from heaven the, or the shout and the sound of a trumpet and the dead in Christ rise first. I'm looking for that. I don't believe there's anything stopping uh, that from coming to pass in the next few minutes. It could be before we even get done with this uh, series. Uh, you better get it while you can. And so, but, uh, but we need to know that there's a resurrection that is played out right now in the now of our life. And uh, we need to tap into that resurrection power now. Uh, Jesus said in John 5, 24 and verse 25, that the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear will live. In Romans 6, in verse 4, Paul said, if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, buried with him in baptism, so shall we also be in the likeness of his resurrection. In Romans 8, in verse 11, Paul said that if, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, in the now of your life, he that raised up Christ Jesus shall also quicken your mortal bodies. This is not your heavenly body or anything else. This is your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. We have a life-giving surge of the spirit of God dwelling in us right now because of a resurrected Jesus that's come back in another form to show us all of the things that the Father wants to do in our life, bearing witness that we are his children. Faith is the substance of things hoped for in, in Hebrews 11.1 1, and the evidence of things not yet seen. We are people who are living in that word that he says that the day that here will live. Second Corinthians four in verse uh, uh, thirteen says, "We having that same spirit of faith that uh, I have believed, therefore I have spoken." Second uh, uh, Corinthians four in verse uh, eleven says, uh, "Though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being made fresh again." day by day. You have to have resurrection power living in, in your life. Let's go back to the event. Now it's in verse 28, John 11. And she'd heard these things. This was Martha. And she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now here's a, here's a person Jesus is calling. Mary, where are you at? And it says she arose quickly. You know, it's you, you can't you can't play down the quick response to a calling of his voice. You want to be instant with that. You want to be instant uh, with that. Just don't put off his voice. Uh, there's nothing on TV. There's nothing that would uh, require you to put off listening to him at this moment um, in your life. And uh, so so Jesus is calling. Mary's coming out. Now, Jesus had not yet come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. It says in the message that he was standing outside the gate. He hadn't really come up the sidewalk yet. He was still out on the road, ready to turn in. And then Martha came out to meet him, and Mary came out then to meet him. And the first thing that she said was the same thing that Martha echoed. She said in verse 31, there were Jews that were with her uh, in the house and comforting her. And when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, they followed her saying, she's going out there to the tomb to weep. Because the tomb only represented a place where, where there was remorse, and that there was lamentation. There was uh, a lot of crying. And uh, it gave that picture. And then Mary came to Jesus where he was and saw him and fell down. And she said the same thing Martha did. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus didn't go into the whole thing again. It just said that uh, when he saw her weeping, 
and the Jews that were that who came with her were weeping that he groaned. There it means sighed. One of those big God side things where he just thought, what will they ever learn? I'm more than this. I can do it. I'm there for him. In his spirit, and he was troubled. He said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Uh, I want you to know something. Uh, others could be on the way to the tomb. Uh, others have already put put Lazarus in the grave and he's not coming out. And there's a road to the tomb. And it started right outside of Martha and Mary and Lazarus's house. And Jesus didn't have to go in the gate because Jesus was looking down the road. He was looking on down the road toward the cemetery. And the Lord began to speak with me about this. He showed me something. He said, uh, my eyes are always down the road in those cemeteries. I hate cemeteries. I hate them. I'm going to empty them. That's the way Jesus looks at cemeteries. And, and it said that when he began to go toward it, he groaned within himself. And the word groan there that time means anger with indignation. One translation said he snorted like a bull. You see, God is mad at death. And, and uh, when he gets, and the reason why, that because he sees what the tomb represents. He sees that uh, uh, tombs are a place of finality, uh, a place where uh, life has stopped uh, or dreams has stopped or health has stopped. The tomb represents everything that cries out, it's over. It's over. But with Jesus standing, looking into that cemetery, it's not over. And when there can be a tomb experience in your life, a tomb experience will say your dreams have been killed off. A tomb experience can say that um, uh, the goals aren't going to get met uh, or the health is not good and it's getting worse or the marriage relationship is not looking very well. It looks like you're heading down a bad path or something's whispered into you, your kids are lost and they're not coming back. Excuses. The grave says that divorce is on the horizon or cancer that maybe can't be beat or COVID or maybe there's bankruptcy. All of those are tomb words. But the resurrection and the life says, we're coming out of that. So it says, where have you laid him? Well, he's right over here. It says in verse 39, Jesus said, take away that stone. And then there's the excuses. By this time, Lord, he's, there's a stench. He's been dead four days. Verse 40 says, did I not say unto you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of the God? And they took away the stone. And then a living Lord spoke to a dead Lazarus, come forth, and he came out. And I want you to know something today. If you can get Jesus in front of anything that you think has died off, that thing's going to live again. You know, it starts with you putting Jesus before you. David said, I have set the Lord always before my face, and because he is at my right hand, I will not be moved. Therefore, my glory rejoices, my flesh will rest in hope. And then he spoke of a grave experience. He said, for you will not leave my soul in the grave, nor will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. For you have shown me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. You see, when Jesus is in front of, of, uh, of us, the only thing that, that we can look through Jesus to is maybe see what's been dead or buried, but Jesus on our side lets us know that I can resurrect it. Can we get him in front of what we think's been killed off today? Can we get him in front of our health? 
Can we get him in front of our businesses? Listen, two a, a year ago, they told me that I had a four in 10 chance of making it because of an, an aortic dissection in my heart. They gave, most people don't even get out of the emergency room uh, with what I had. But the Lord whispered into my spirit and said, you will not die but live and declare my works. And you know what? I'll go on the word of the voice of that resurrector every time because here I am today. I've shut down business and everything to just now declare the word of God full time for you. And I'm believing for, for you to see that happening into our life. God is a good God. He loves you and he cares for you. If you need prayer for anything today, you can reach me at on my Facebook page at Robert Fry, or you can reach me at, um, at uh, robertfryministries.org or bob at Robert Fry, uh, or dot, uh, uh, mini, uh, I'm sorry, Bob at Robert Fry Ministries dot Gmail. And so, uh, until next time, uh, listen to his voice, respond to that call, and lay those things before his feet. God will lift them up for you. God bless.